It is the Zach Seng Show. We got Heather, <laughs> Dan, <laughs> and Starly, everybody. Yay! All right. I don't know why I me. Starly Hope. What a beautiful name. Thank you. I mean, that's your God given know... birth name. Yes. Starly. Mm-hmm. How did that come to your parents? Um, it came to my mom. My mom said that she knew I was going to be a singer. So oh. she gave me a stage name and she told my dad about her idea about giving me the stage name. And dad said, no, she's <laughs> going to get teased at school. We don't want to name her that. And uh, he had some boring name for me. And my mom really put her foot down and was like, no, she's really going to be a singer. So we have to do this. And what? my dad, you know, the mom's the boss at the end of the day. Of course. I mean, yes. she pushed you when out. It comes to the yeah. Names, yeah. yeah. When it comes to the names, like, yeah. <laughs> Did you end up getting teased? Yes, I did. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> not, uh, not, uh, I mean, wouldn't say a hell of a lot for that. I got teased yeah. for other things, but I got teased in high school a fair bit for my name. Went like the first, you know, the beginning years, like se- year seven and eight, I gotcha. for sure. But you want yeah, that, junior right? Junior years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it gives you tough skin mm-hmm. yeah. for later on. Like it's, I was always a different type of person. I was always an individual and a little bit weird. And so it didn't bother me that people teased me. It was like, whatever. Do you That's think just you, another thing. you morphed to your name? Because I, I do genuinely feel like in a weird side of you me and in my brain. that you, yeah, yeah, like th- your name is what y- you kind of live into. It's yeah. your vessel almost. Yeah, I definitely, well... I mean, if I, I mean, there's other artists named, I don't know, like Emily or something, and they still, <laughs> they can be superstars as well. So, but I do think that, um, that a name definitely helps you in, in whatever you're doing. Like my brother's name's Chase and his surname's Hope and his name's Chase Hope and he's a criminal defense lawyer. Wow. So it's, Ooh. you know, so okay. yeah, so it's, okay. my mom's pretty good at doing these names. Like, sh- if you ever need to name your kid, you call my mom, I- she'll help you out. I- She's like, By the way, that should be a whole consultancy firm <laughs> in Manhattan. Be. That would be so popular. I'm sure it would work out here. Yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. oh my God, yeah. LA, Manhattan yeah. to get the Zen yeah. right, you yeah. know, to get everything right, the stars in a line, yeah, yeah, yeah. all that type of crap. Yeah, and my mom, she'd be a good one for that because people would believe in her because she's got my brother's name's Bo Bo Hope and he's a builder so Bo the builder and he has a construction company so all the kids <laughs> worked awesome. out pretty we all do pretty good things wow <laughs> yeah I, I mean and you could say like your job may be the riskiest right and like the hardest dream to actually Pretty. chase lawyer yeah. you can go to school for that yeah. you know to d- create your own construction company dedicate yourself to that and you yeah. dedicated yourself to music yeah but you never know where it's gonna play at the end of the day yeah and you've been doing this a while yeah yeah I'd say that for sure um, it's pretty tough but I'd say everything in life is tough i think whatever you go to do these days you have to you have to work hard to be good at it if you're going to get anywhere in anything so it just happened that i couldn't see myself doing anything else if i was to do be a lawyer or something that would that would be a nightmare for me that would be i would be a disaster (laughs) and it wouldn't work out but um with music yeah um i worked really hard at it for a long time and i was just about to give up and then everything changed so yeah it's good I mean, you knew you were going to be a singer at the age of six, right? Yeah, around around that age. You would like rent La Bamba every week? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would rent it every single week <laughs> and I would sing the words to that song like crazy. And whenever there was family gatherings, I'd go around and get a little hat and collect money <laughs> and uh, make my little pocket money. And um, yeah, I mean, I was obsessed with music from a young age, for sure. And let, let's go through a little bit of a timeline, right? Yeah. So you start your music career in Australia. Mm-hmm. Are you writing songs for artists there or do you only begin writing for other artists in London? I uh, was writing, I cut my first records when I was about 14 okay. and people would tell me, you should be a writer, you should write for so-and-so. And I had it in my head, no, I'm going to be an artist, so I'm not going to give my songs away. I'm just going to do it myself and whatever. So and th- what really could kind of be seen almost like as an insult fueled you. Yeah, yeah. Well, well. so in the beginning, you're, when you're young, you don't see the bigger picture. So yeah. that's how I felt at that time. Um, as I got older, though, um, in Australia, a lot of people would tell me, you need to straighten your hair, you need to lose weight, you need to be completely different to what you are to be an artist. And so for me, being young and impressionable, it was a thing for me to just, it, I took it on and I really believed them. And I kind of believed the things they told me. And so I thought, well, I'm going to move to London and because London's a bigger market and yeah. there's more people that look like me and there's more people that are doing different things aside from just the straight up pop. So I could go there and I'm sure I could figure out something. So I thought I'm just going to be a songwriter because then I don't have to throw myself out there and embarrass myself. You know, I It's I, also a vessel f- creatively for you. You got to get, yeah, get it out I, somehow. I wanted to be music regardless, but um, 
I, I definitely started believing the people that, that told me that I couldn't do it. So I, I, my self-esteem went down in that way for some reason and I was scared of being an artist. And so when I went to London, I was like, yeah, I'll be a songwriter. And I worked really hard at that. I got myself a publishing deal after the first year and just I was just throwing myself into studios. I didn't have any real contacts there. I just sort of worked at it. And um, well, after a, a period of time of being there, it wasn't really working out. I had a lot of near misses. I had a lot of close calls where I could have had a smash happen and then it didn't happen. And it was like really things like that. And for some reason, I believe that God was in control and didn't want me to get comfortable being just a songwriter. Because if I did, I wouldn't see what was on the other end of what yeah. I was really meant to be doing, what I was born to do. And um, so I came home deflated after years of being there and moved back into my parents' house and was just going to quit. Did, and uh, yeah. Did you have any hits at, at all? Like, not hits, but like, nope. what artists uh, did you work with? I had one song that came out with Nelly featuring Nelly Furtado, like the two Nellies together That's on, cool. on his album at some point. Mm. I had one song that I was really close to getting, I cut the vocals with her, this girl that won the X Factor, who was signed to Epic at the time, okay. um, Melanie Amaro. Oh, went and her. cut vocals with her and then she got dropped right before the single was meant to come out oh. and that was my song that I wrote in my garage and it was just like a big, a thing that would have changed my life. So I think... Does that song still live today? Like, where is it? It's somewhere in my computer somewhere. Would you ever <laughs> release a song like that? Um, I think that songs, certain songs have a relevancy for a certain amount of time. Okay. And then, and then they kind of, yeah, they kind of depreciate it, or something. And then, and then some songs are just timeless, but that one wasn't timeless, I don't believe. How'd you know it wasn't timeless? What was it I don't know. I just get a feeling. I'm just, I don't know. I just go with my own feeling of like, do I feel like this is trendy? Does this feel it's cool? Nah, it's, it's kind of boring. I'll leave that there for a while. And maybe in 10 years, it'll come back around and I'll just be like, okay, this is perfect for this boy band or something. So, but, so those are the songs you give away. Uh, yeah, I mean, for sure. I, I don't even show people that song, though. It's kind of like, okay, it's it's old school now. I'm just going to kind of make new records. Okay. And, yeah. Near misses, how are you living? Like, how are you paying for life? <laughs> like, I was really surviving on a really small amount of money that was from my publishing deal at the time. Okay. And, um, yeah, I was really doing it pretty tough. And uh, But I didn't care because I thought it doesn't matter because my, my life can change like that if I work really hard. And that's really, um, that's a driving factor, right? That's the hope. Yeah. Because it takes yeah. one song and everything's different, as you now know. Yeah, but it takes forever to get that one song sometimes. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's the the passion that you have for it. You know, you kind of would do it without the money. So if I have enough money to live, I would still just do it just to be there and, yeah. and learn and get better. Because I know that eventually something's going to change. If you're just continuing to get better at what you're doing and you're looking back every year and you can see how far you've come and you've made a lot of improvement, yeah. even if financially you haven't made improvement, if you've made improvement in your craft, then you're building your worth. That's still yeah. that's still real. Even though other people would be like, "There's something wrong with you. Like you need to like get a real job," and stuff like that. But so that's how you know kind of that them. there's nothing else for you besides music. Yeah, you, that's the only way. That's yeah. like that's uh, it's the best example that you know that you can give everything you have and yeah. be okay with it giving nothing back yeah. for now because you know it will all work out in the end. Yeah, but what's really funny is when you've never done it before, there is a small thing in your head that when people are telling you you're going to fail, this is bullshit or whatever uh -huh. sorry to swear it's okay um that yeah that you think me or maybe they're right and yeah. so and that comes in your head because you've never done it before but now nobody could tell me <laughs> because i'm like okay my <laughs> intuition was right <laughs> 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 yeah i mean okay call on me happens this mm -hmm. song it's pretty much you're, you're talking to god right you're down mm -hmm. on your knees and you're mm -hmm. saying when is it my turn mm -hmm. when are you gonna call on me when mm -hmm. is it my shot mm -hmm. like is, is that that's what I get from the record? Yeah, um, it's it's a mixture. So it's me talking to God, and then also understanding that God has the ultimate control. Yeah. But I have to take control of the way I'm feeling at that particular time and point in my life. You know, and understand this. Focus on the good things that are in my life, and then also focus on how I can improve my current situation. So regardless of yes, God's in control, and people say, "Yep, I'll leave it to fate." If it's not. Uh, you know, fate sometimes is something that you can change yourself yeah. because if you have enough energy and drive to do that, then it's not just like, oh, when people say, oh, yeah, if I get lucky, you know, I'll do that. But there's no such thing as luck. You make your own and everybody, everybody that's successful knows that. You're so, so right. Kinda, You're yeah. just a catalyst of fate, right? Like <laughs> you can help it. You can work with it, but mm. you can't, yeah. can't solely rely on it. No, you have to really push and just keep pushing and if there's something that you really believe in just don't give up that's the main thing and, and in that moment that song and writing that song that was therapy for you yep. uh, right mm -hmm. yep I um I always write things when I feel strongly about something and um at that time I'd 
been through a, pe- a period of depression and everything. So I was kind of like feeling really emotional and I was crying when I was writing it because it was a thing that I just needed to get out of my system. And, um, and it was funny because when I'd finished it, I thought, man, nobody else is going to sing this the way that I can sing it because um, nobody has experienced the same story as me. And um, I need people to feel this message because even they ha- they haven't been through my exact path, but they are experiencing the same thing as what I'm going through. So I want to give this message to people and let me just go for it and see what I can do and just um, get myself a little indie deal and see if I can put it out. And I had no idea what was going to happen. I just right. thought, let me just give it a shot. And um, yeah, it was when I sort of let go of caring so much, I think is when things changed. It really? Yeah. I, I'm just kind of picturing you writing that song and your tears are on the paper. And I mean, that's like, it, it's incredible that this was the song that changed everything. And it, the music spoke for itself, right? Mm, mm-hmm. It wasn't like you were already on a big label and they leveraged yeah. to get this song played. I mean, this was organic. This mm-hmm. was real. Yeah. The song stood and spoke for itself. Yeah. The, um, the original I wrote um, on keys. Then in oh. my bedroom. Is it slow? Then, like, I mean, did you start it? Like, I, I would love to hear the. Yeah, r- it's a lot slower. Yeah, it's the one. There's one on um, Spotify that's the guitar version. That's the same tempo as the one I did on keys. Oh, great! So I did it on keys. Then I got my friend to play the guitar instead of the keys because I thought, ah, <laughs> oh, I think guitar sounds better and whatever. So we used the guitar for the version that you hear, the, f- the first version that came out that had the production to it. God. My friend in New Zealand did that production for me, P Money. Wow. And so um, he put it together and and I sort of mixed it and made sure it was perfect for me. And I got these other guys, Odd Mob, who I'd feature on another song with. I got them to finish the production and do some tidied up little pieces. And then um, I was happy with it, put it out. Super organic, had no idea what was going to happen. It started to build a little bit online. It was doing pretty well. And you know, all those type of music blogs, was it was kind of yeah. sort of building up some type of um, steam a little bit. And then the uh, label said, we're going to do a remix package because that's what they always do. And they're like, we're going to put five together. Let's pick the the best five. So I said, okay. And then they sent me the versions. I picked Ryan's as one of them. Didn't have a clue what was going to happen. We put it up on Spotify. I think two weeks later, it had 10 million, or not even two weeks. I think one week later, it had like 10 million plays. And we were like, holy sh something is happening <laughs> and then I was in LA at the time and I was already talking to Epic um, to do my first um, uh, what do you call it my deal with Epic that Got I was it. doing yeah. Your first, oh, do you have a record um, deal do you have a late, like are you going to release albums um, I'm working on an album a project cool. um, at the moment so I've got my next single coming out pretty soon sweet um, but yeah um, we are working on a licensing deal with Epic at the time and so when that was happening all of a sudden this song just naturally on Spotify was just going insane people were just loving it and uh, then Ryan was in LA at the time we met up for the first time we'd never even met each wow. other wow and then we were like whoa what the hell is happening it was <laughs> overwhelming so all of this success now with the tour and everything is because of this one song. Yeah, I would say for sure, yeah. It's um, definitely because of this record. Um, and I think people are excited about what's coming next and I'm working on records really hard. And uh, yeah, and I guess this is going to be my life now. So, it, yeah. <laughs> is there fear on your end to follow up a song like this? Because uh, it's a big one. Yeah, at first there was. And then I kind of felt like, well... I'm just going to keep doing what I normally do. So now I'm more relaxed about it. I think the more I've been performing and things like that, I've started to just really come into myself because I've been performing some of the new songs. Um, And so I'm really excited about those as well. So now it's just gone from being nervous to now excited to put the next thing out. Cool. What's the sound of the new songs? Are they all kind of this feel-good sound? Um, Yeah, they're going to be in the dance realm. um, But, I mean, some of them are a little bit more more um, about relationships or things like that and some of them a little bit not dark or completely dark but um, a little bit a little bit more darker than just just this message of hope I mean all my songs have a feeling of hope in some way but yeah this one is like a really inspirational song not all my songs are inspirational Mm. because I don't think I'm always feeling like that yeah Yeah, you know so you got to just show what you're really going through I don't think it would be smart to be like oh yeah let me try and do the same thing and replicate something that was so real I can't you can't manufacture feelings yeah and I don't want to do that because that's not the kind of person I am I'm I'm like I can't be like that so it's all good are you writing actively like yeah yeah I'm writing currently on tour as well but we're cutting some vocals for the the latest 
things that we might be putting out pretty soon. So And now um, you have new emotions. You have new feelings, new yes, experiences. Sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, not as depressing? Where are we at? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, not as depressing for sure, but there's still, I mean, there's still relationship things that are kind of, you know, they drive you crazy or whatever. Um, you, you got a relationship? Um, Boys, uh, girls, what are you into? I, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to make any, I don't know. A little both? Put me on spot. Come on. <laughs> 2017. Yeah, a little bit of both. Yeah. Let's just say. Yeah. Um, but I'm not Why limit really. yourself? You know? I, yeah, I don't really have time for real relationships, which is a problem for it. me because I'm a. Re- I can't just be the you know, just like hit, hit and run kind of person. You, you so, want to invest a little bit, but you can't be there 24-7. Yeah, and then I can't, re- you know, it's just, there's a, just a weird balance at the moment that I'm trying to maintain, which is tough. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm sure that will come out in the songs at some point. Fun. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> That's a tease, dude. That's good. How's your dad doing? Does he still make My blinds? Dad. Yes, he does. Um, I cool. think he's waiting for the day that he could just throw in the towel and just walk away from the whole thing. You mean um, close the blinds? Yes, close the blinds on the whole thing. Nice. Um, wow. But yeah, Good joke. He's, uh, mm, he's still making I mean, blinds. <laughs> um, my parents were watching, I was on Jimmy Kimmel last night. Oh, Congrats. Cool. It was a beautiful performance, Thank by the way. Thank you so much. And uh, my parents were watching it. They stayed up really late and they were so excited. My brother's here from Australia visiting with one of his friends. They're following us. They're going coming to the next city, San Diego, with us. How cool. Um, yeah, super cool. Um, so good to have him here because there's, I come from a family of five kids. So, um, the fact that one of my brothers is here when all this is happening is so amazing. It's special. Uh, yeah. You get to share it with somebody who, who knows you really pretty much best. Yeah. Yeah. And he was telling some embarrassing stories of, uh, <laughs> at the table last night at the dinner table. It was so, it was so funny, but I've forgotten some of those things, but I used to be a master at street fighter, that video game, you know, that video game. Yeah. Of course. I used to be, so I forgot about it even, but he brought it up and he was like, um, saying how I used to beat all the grown up boys. I was a little girl and they, you, you know how, when you go and put your dollar in, and they're like, oh, yeah, we'll beat her easy. easy. Yeah. Let, let her in, let her in. Let's just get rid of her so she'll get out of the line and, like, whatever. <laughs> I go in, smash every single person, and just they just, just be, like, embarrassed. And then well, my mum, he told this story about when we did it just before um, we're going to the movies that day, and my mum said, okay, one game, play one game. So I went in, and the boys let me in again because they thought that I wouldn't win. <laughs> one, and then kept beating all of them, and then my mum said, the movie's about to start. We have to go. And then I was like, okay, who wants my credit? And then one boy's like, okay. <laughs> I just walked away. I mean, what, made you, what makes you so good at that? Because it's like really just tiny fingers and fast moving things. <laughs> yeah. Because you don't really ever know what you're doing, right? Yeah. Well, you kind of do though. You okay. kind of do. Yeah. It's certain. So you press a certain two buttons will do a certain thing. And, okay. and you know. And so you, it's combos. Yeah. You kind of keep going God. with those com- combos, but you don't do the same two things forever. You got to switch it a little bit, but just <laughs> keep doing this switch. And they can't. <laughs> just enough. <laughs> I've always had fast hands because I play drums so I play like percussion so it's just my hands are always good so. <laughs> yeah, yeah you were supposed to come in a few days ago but you had a little uh, break in incident yes sir well, what yes, happened there we did um, in San Francisco which was one of our best audiences especially for me because they were filled early because I'm the first of three they were there really early and oh, those cool. was packed oh, that's great. so that was so good for me you know it was such a great show <laughs> and I walked off feeling you know on cloud nine and we went to go and eat dinner because I hadn't eaten all day so at like midnight we went to go and eat at this spot parked our car 40 minutes later we came out and the windows were broken oh. into and oh. they pulled out whatever they could they got my passport they got all my cards oh, no. oh. Um, they have lots of designer sunglasses whatever you can imagine that was like really personal they had everything and then they took laptops from our shows and all that kind of stuff so we had to recover our shows and try to make sure that we have all the new stems and stuff organized for the show so yeah it was really insane and then the police found a couple of suitcases just opened and there was actually like feces in there and stuff so they took all my and they replaced it with real and I was like, "Damn you!" That's a weird thing did, to did do. You lose I think any? it was. Oh. I think it was dog. Oh. Shit. I don't know oh, exactly what dumb. kind. That's sick. <laughs> did you lose any like music or anything that can't be replaced? Um, no, we 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 lost parts of the show that we developed, but we we sort of worked back to get it happening. Thank God. So that's okay. Yeah, my computer was in my other bag, so that's fine. Dude, homeless problem in San Francisco. It all stems from the multi-billion dollar companies yes, and the so. fact that like there's yeah. a giant divide. Mm-hmm. Yep. Just yeah. Just saying. Yeah, it's yeah, it's pretty bad there. And I and nobody warned us though. It's just like well, because when I it to, is so beautiful. Like yeah, you so, wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. Exactly. I went to the Australian consulate and they were saying, oh yeah, every other day we have an Australian coming in here saying their passports 
have been stolen from their car from San Fran, like their personal items and stuff. And so. the sad thing is, it's probably somebody who's only been on the streets for like six months to a year. Mm-hmm. You know, that's you the never sad know. thing. Yep. But well, what's go. it like yep. uh, growing up in Australia? Because there's some like scary creatures there. There's some like giant spiders and lizards. Uh, I've never, um, it's really funny when people ask me this question because um, I'm from Sydney, from the city, and um, but there are a lot of animals and stuff, but you, I've never been bitten by a spider or... Um. Well, you haven't lived in Australia then. <laughs> I've never okay, been bitten well, by a spider. Well, I've never <laughs> seen a kangaroo in my backyard or anything like that. Um, <laughs> by the way, these are probably all the radio questions you get at yeah, every well, other I, stop. Yeah, well, and I it's not... Um, and, and there aren't killer sharks everywhere. It's um, only in certain parts. I think they really uh, emphasize on some of the things that are really rare. Like those things aren't super in your face every day. Well, that's a letdown. Um, yeah. Well, I don't <laughs> ever want to go to Australia. Well, it's pretty anywhere. safe. And even like I leave my car. I mean, I shouldn't. I don't know if I should say this, but it doesn't matter. I leave my car unlocked all the time. Wow. My parents' house is always open. People come in. Jesus. They knock on the door. They just walk in. You know, like people from like, it's pretty safe. Well, well so um, this is like karma then. Like you, you ask the universe to rob you at yeah. least <laughs> once. Well, so it's your fault. Yeah, I've never been robbed. So yeah, that's this true. Is- that's true. <laughs> I've yeah, and now I'm really protective of my stuff. Now I've like gone around and always carry my bag everywhere. I had left my bag in the car that day for oh. no apparent reason. So, so did my manager. You should so. also just start like locking things. Like just get <laughs> giant <laughs> bolt locks on, on my like bag. Because then when they steal it, right, joke's on you. It's going to take you so long to get it open. I'm sure they'd still take it and try and find a way to get into but it. Hope Maybe they'd give up, you know, and not poop in it. <laughs> that's maybe. so sad. Maybe I'm they sorry. would. Yeah, maybe they would just leave it because it's too hard to lug it around. Yeah, that's it. That's a good idea. You got to be mobile if you're homeless, man. Yeah. You got to yeah. stay on your toes. Yeah. Um, Starly Hope, <laughs> an honor to talk to you. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thanks also, for having me. At, uh, for the Woody Awards, was there some was there some feedback in the beginning of your performance? Yes, there was. How do you deal with that? Because yeah. I was watching and it was just like. Arr! Oh man, I mean, I've been dealing with these types of things recently as well in the Clean Bandit tour. Um, you just kind of have to go with the flow, but these are some of my, like the Woodies are some of my first performances. Mm-hmm. Like I've only perf- now I've started getting a bit better, but um, Woodies was maybe my I'd say like my seventh performance ever, and so and then it was such a huge audience, and then it's on TV and it's live and all that. So you do just have to just pretend that nothing's happening and just try and go with it. But it is scary. It's like the elephant in the room. Everybody knows it's happening. Yeah, but I think this tour is really good for me because by the end of this, I'm just going to be so used to it. Because already from the from the second day of tour, my uh, my what do you call it the in ears um, pack? pack thing yeah. just went out it just Ooh. went blank it wasn't that it turned off it just was dead and so i had to take it off that was after the first line of my first song so oh, of my first, of my set so I took it off i just left it on the table took my in ears out left it and just had to keep flowing and then another day because my um all my personal items got stolen my in ears got stolen oh no oh. and so the other day when i performed in la i had generic in ears which people know i guess it's behind the good. scenes that once you get used to using the real deal the generic ones are really hard to use, so I was you, panicking before that show because it wasn't comfortable. But um, you just got to go with it. It's so not the same sound. By the end of this, I'm, I think I'm going to be able to do a whole show with no in ears, no nothing, okay. Hell not yeah. even any sound. I'll just do it a cappella. I yeah. think by the end of this thing, I'm going to be. A pro. But that's what you want, <laughs> yeah. right? You want to be put through the ringer. Do yeah. it to me now, bro, so yeah. I can be prepared for the that's future. That's true. I don't want to be doing that. I mean, at any huge awards show or something. Th- th- this is the time. Uh huh. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> you are on tour right now. How, yeah. how many more weeks do we have on the road? I think three weeks. Cool. Uh, we're on till May the 3rd. Czar so. Larson and Clean Bandit, you're yes, with sir. them? Yes. Good company there. Good fun. Yeah, they're and, great. I love partying to their stuff. When I finish my set, I just party all night. I've been watching your Instagram <laughs> videos. You, you <laughs> yeah. film, you chill. Yep. I like your dance moves too. You oh, easily thanks. drop to your knees. <laughs> you, very, <laughs> you, see you have very, oh, not like that. Not like that. Not like that. Relax, everybody. You didn't let me finish. I was going to. I think well, you, you did finish. No, I don't think there's anything no. to that. You have very fluid knees. You, you did. Dance heavy with your knees. You're not oh, you're helping. Not. No. <laughs> I was watching you on Good Morning America. How'd yeah. you, how'd you, <laughs> how, how do you come back from that? I have no <laughs> idea. But I'm going to ask you how you floated on Jimmy Kimmel because I was really interested. Okay, so should I reveal it though? I mean, because you know, I might be using it again at some point. It might be bigger and better. Okay. I mean, should I tell you? you, you um, I'll tell you on the side after this. Okay, cool. Yeah. You don't want to ruin the illusion. No, 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 I no. get it. <laughs> Starly, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for having me, guys. Lot of love. <laughs> Call on me is a single. Thank you. Check her out yeah. on the Clean Bandits Our Larson tour. A lot of love for you. Thank thanks. you.